this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing another Ask Anything. This is episode 233. I'm going to be diving into Iona and Cocoa Pebbles today. First question comes here from YouTube. It is, do you think Elves is good in the current meta for Legacy? Hell yes, this is a wonderful deck. I've had several people try to trade me for Gaius Cradles recently. Natural Order and Glimpse of Nature will probably shoot up given the uh, recent results that we're starting to see. Elves is a wonderful combo deck. It's a wonderful fair deck also in Legacy. I really like it. But one thing I really want to encourage people to do, given the shakeup in Legacy, is take a minute and start brewing. Don't just look at the old decks that were good before Dig Through Time. Look at some of the new cards and some underplayed cards. I posted this recently to my Instagram, and it's five cards that I know are being underplayed in Legacy. I played a Grixis deck that I'm going to have a deck tech coming out on later, but all all of these cards were in the 75, and most of them were in the 60 for it. Notion Thief is a powerhouse. Brainstorm is the best card in Legacy. You can turn Brainstorm into him to Turok for them, and Ancestral Recall for you. So good. Hard counters. Most people play Force of Will only, but if you can actually counter some of the combo pieces... They don't expect that fifth, sixth counter to come out. Counterspell is a classic favorite. Sudden Shock is better in 75% of situations out there than Lightning Bolt. Yes, you heard me correctly. Sudden Shock is better more than 50% of the time in Legacy than Lightning Bolt especially if you are playing a control deck. Chalice of the Void on one is a real card. Super powerful. Having Sudden Shock at two helps you. Mother of Ruin, powerhouse card. They never see Sudden Shock coming. Delver of Secrets is one of the best cards in the environment. Always being able to kill it. So good. Colgan's Command, I've been raving about this card for weeks. Every single time I play it in Legacy, I have my opponent pick it up and read it, hand it back to me. Usually they only read it the first or second line of it. They're so confused. One of my opponents even said, is that a real card in Legacy? I'm like, I just killed your Jitte and your Stoneforge Mystic. Yes, this is a real card. This powerhouse card. Criminally underplayed in Legacy. It's seeing some play in Modern. Give the card a try. Instant speed target player discards a card. Worst case, you get rid of their next draw, and you return a Snapcaster from your graveyard back to your hand, or just hit them for two. I'm tempted to try like a modern brew that has like three or four of these commands and some electrolyzes and a bunch of counter spells and does cool stuff. Last one here is probably the one people are going to argue with the most on this list. Mine Break Trap. Super popular card for a while against Storm. I actually don't think it's that great against Storm. Storm currently plays a bunch of cards like Dress or Cobble Therapy. They fill their graveyard, and then they go get past in flames. They make sure you don't have anything in hand. Yes, it's nice if they are just trying to go off, and I'm going to side it in against Storm. But where I really like this card is against your counter wars for miracles, making sure that you win those counter wars, or playing against Cavern of Souls. This counters, because it doesn't say counter, cards off Cavern of Souls. How great is it to exile the creature that they thought they were going to get through that's going to wreck your control plan? Having a counter spell that gets around Cavern of Souls is very, very powerful. Okay, I just ranted a lot on Legacy. Super excited about Legacy overall. We've got the GP coming up. If you're in the Seattle area, definitely come chat with me at the Legacy GP. Next question here. Whatever happened to your microwaving Iona? You stated that you would. I've got an Iona. It's in a box. I got it for retail from Phoenix Comics. Don't worry, I'm going to destroy this Iona. Iona is the only card that I can think of that really should be banned right now in Commander. Yes, I 
know that there's ways to deal with it, like turning your whole single color deck into a bunch of artifacts, but whole nother story. First, thank you to Phoenix for actually selling this at retail. Second thing is, I tried microwaving some cards. Maybe it's just my microwave or the other microwave that I tested it on. Shh, don't tell anybody that I was testing it on several microwaves. They actually don't look that cool in the microwaves that I've tried. So I need a better way to destroy Iona. If you've got any suggestions, definitely leave it in the comments. I'm thinking paper shredder, maybe? <sighs> then I could put it in a sleeve and play it as a commander. Okay, it's not a good commander. Play it in a reanimator deck, though. Yes, definitely. Any suggestions, or if you're in the Seattle area and have a paper shredder I could borrow, definitely let me know. If you want to get a question answered here, Facebook is one of the best ways. I've got a link down to Mythic MTG Tech in Facebook. Each week I've only had one question submitted through Facebook. Another way to guarantee that your questions are answered is Patreon. I'm choosing questions from Patreon every week, and when I get to 10,000, I'm going to answer all of my remaining Patreon questions along with a bunch of questions from the community overall. I've got a few things here, and I'm weighing in on fat packs, which... I'm doing a little bit, this is a really tough topic. I do not like paying above retail from a retail establishment the day that things come out. Manufacturer suggested retail does have a reasonable markup to it. With that said, I understand how market economics work. We wouldn't be able to charge over retail if people weren't paying over retail. I know some retailers that if they put it up, at retail, they would just get bought out by other very large retailers in the market, and then nobody locally would get it. I really suggest that stores look at some type of customer loyalty system, some type of a way that guarantees that these type of things get out to your fan base at retail well in advance before people even know what's in it. Many of the stores that I know have pre-sign-up sheets for things like this, and if you signed up for a battle for Zendikar fat pack before we knew that there were full art lands in it, and you always get fat packs, you're gonna get that for retail. Would I buy these at the inflated prices? No, the math just doesn't work. Go on TCG Player, go on Puka Trade, pick up the lands, they're running like 12 to 25 cents a piece. You can get the lands that you want. Fat packs have never been a great investment. It's a better investment usually to buy booster packs. The fact that they put a bunch of full art lands in here shot up the value. Is there a benefit? To having a limited print run on fat packs? Yes, there is, because these usually don't sell out. They often end up selling for much less. They're really kind of a way to get new players in and give them the land that they need. There's no reason to print huge numbers of these. In this case, though, they've been so popular, I could see wizards printing more of these. Everybody's going to scream at that idea, going, no, 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 they'll never do that. What happened with the commander decks when everybody bought out the commander decks with True Name Nemesis? Wizards reprinted them with two True Name Nemesis per box. If there's a huge demand for these and an opportunity for Wizards to make some money off of them, I can see them taking advantage of this. I would not be surprised to see large amounts of fat packs available through either big box retailers or through your normal retailers before the end of the year. Can't guarantee it will happen. I have no inside knowledge about this. Who knows? Is there a drawback to an unlimited print run on fat packs? Yes. These will usually just sit on the shelf. Outside of this one case where you've actually put something in it that has upped the retail value. And Wizards could easily put like a promo card of something that's tournament playable in them or something else to up the value. As long as these things are in print, I don't actually see any harm from larger print runs of them. There's a limited amount of time that every set is in print. And as long as those sets are in print, make lots of boosters available, make lots of fat packs available, bring down the cost of playing standard. If lots of these get opened, the cost of standard cards will go down. If Wizards is able to sell large amounts of them. Over time, the really good modern and legacy playable cards will go back up. Interesting question. I would avoid the fat packs though right now. So this is two questions in one. This is one of those questions that I got asked in person and a patron also asked a question that I'm able to answer together. The in-person question was, what is the oddest named deck you have played? And as you guys all know, in Magic, we've got some crazy named deck. Slephalid Breakfast, High Tide, Serenity. Okay, High Tide and Serenity are the same deck, but they've got crazy names, Death and Taxes. This is Cocoa Pebbles. 
I used to play a version of this, slightly faster version, a little bit less, uh, no aura of silence in it. Competitively, local tournaments, and this brought up one of the most memorable games I've ever had in Magic. This is a crazy combo deck. It has Enduring Renewal, Shield Sphere, and Goblin Bombardment. You basically get those out and you can do infinite damage. Combo deck, it's got Necropotence in it, a lot of fast mana. It does really cool stuff. But it's got this card, Demonic Consultation, which is one of my absolute favorite cards to ever play with. I even put this in an EDH deck because I'm that crazy. When you need an answer, you just need an answer. They took Demonic Tutor and made it better. One casting cost, instant speed. You just gotta name a card and then put it in your hand. Well, you have to remove the top six cards of your library and then keep removing cards from your library until you find that card. So the most memorable moment comes about I was playing this last round in a tournament, had a very good record. I believe we were on turn two or turn three. I had a Necro out. I had already drawn a bunch of cards, very close to having the combo, did not have Goblin Bombardment. My opponent's playing Burn, and I got a pretty good idea that he's going to untap and kill me. So I got to go for it this turn. I play Demonic Consultation. I name Goblin Bombardment, the only thing that I'm missing for the combo. I flip the top six cards. There go three of my Goblin Bombardments. You should have just seen my face drop entirely. So happy that it was only three of them. Mill all the way through until the last two or three cards. Get the last Goblin Bombardment. Play it. Play my fast mana. Go off for the combination. There was a chance that I was going to kill myself there entirely. I have killed myself with Demonic Consultation more than once, especially in EDH. I've done it twice. This card, it just really brings forward that black power gamble. You could lose everything feel to it. Wonderful card. I don't think we would ever see something like this reprinted currently. Crazy power level on it card that has really been lost by tradition. I want to say thank you to everybody who put forward these questions. They've been a lot of fun. If you would like more knowledge at a price, subscribe to the channel. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon, supporting the channel. Really enjoy doing this. We've got an EDH video coming out later this week. I've got a review of the Star Wars Uprising app coming out, and I've got a finance video the hot or not piece that I do based off of MTG interests. If you have questions, please post your questions here. I will take one question from this thread and use it for the next Ask Anything, which will be about a week from now. Take care, everybody.